Drum lesson number three. This lesson is all about drumsticks and how to hold them and, and the technique behind that. There are four learning goals for this lesson. First, we want to understand stick types, what all the numbers mean and the different kinds of sticks that are out there and why there are different materials and things like that. The second thing is we want to understand grip types. There are two main grip types, so we're going to talk about matched grip versus traditional grip. And then the third thing is the fulcrum. It's a really essential part of understanding why you hold the stick, where you hold it. And finally, we want to talk about rebound of a stick. That'll really get into the technique of the stick. And then at the very end, I'll give you some exercises so that you can work on those things. The three most common types of wood used for drumsticks are hickory, maple, or oak. And all you need to know about that is that the different type of wood affects the density, so it's going to have a slightly different feel because of the weight of the stick. The three main elements of a stick are length, weight, and diameter. The length of a stick usually varies between about 15 inches to 17 and a half, and that just influences the rebound and where the fulcrum is when we talk about that because the balance is a little bit different depending on the length of the stick. The weight of a stick is determined by the number on the stick. So as the numbers get higher, the weight of the stick gets lighter. Uh, the most common numbers are two, five, and seven. So two is gonna be your heaviest stick. Five will be right in the middle, which is why I made you get a 5A. And then seven is gonna be a lighter stick. And then the letters, which are usually just A and B, sometimes there'll be an N describing that there's a nylon tip. Uh, but A and B, usually A is describing uh, a thinner diameter and B is a thicker diameter. So now I'll just list out real quickly the most common stick types going from thickest and heaviest to lightest and thinnest. You have a 2B which is your thickest and heaviest then you have a 2A, 5B, 5A, 7B, 7A. Most common ones that I see are 2Bs, 5As and 7As. 7As get used for jazz, 5As get used for rock, 2Bs get used for like heavy metal and things like that. And that's a, a broad generalization. Every drummer gets to obviously choose whatever stick feels best for whatever they're doing. But I'll change sticks in between a gig depending on the song type or the venue, for example, is another thing that influences my stick choice. So now let's look at kind of the various types of sticks that are out there. A marching drum stick is going to be pretty thick, and I've taped this because when you're doing marching band, you've got a lot of rim shots, you're playing on a Kevlar head, it's super loud. You don't want a light stick that's going to break. You want something that's loud and can last quite a while, which is what the, tape, the purpose of the tape is for. On the other end of the spectrum, here's like kind of a hot rod beat. It's a lot of thin rods, um, almost like toothpicks that are overgrown. And they produce a softer sound, but the rebound really sucks on these sticks because they, they absorb a lot of the energy when you play it. But those are useful for playing in small venues. Here's a stick that has it's a swizzle stick, meaning it has different things on either end. So you can play it like a drumstick, but then you also have a felt thing here for if you need to do a quick cymbal roll. I use these kinds of sticks when I'm playing in musicals because I'll have a passage on the snare drum where I'm playing and then the very next beat or like two beats away I gotta play a uh, cymbal roll and it's quicker to just flip your stick than to grab a whole other set of sticks so that's useful for that. Sticks that have nylon on the tip that produces um, a slightly pingier sound on the cymbal the main reason drumsticks have nylon is because they last longer than wood. I personally prefer wood tipped sticks, but they don't last as long. But to me, the sound of a wood tip on a cymbal is better. I enjoy it more than nylon. But for beginners, a nylon tip is usually really good. That's what I started with. Here's a timbali stick, and notice that it doesn't have any tip or taper to it. It's just a piece of wood that's bit like a dowel that's kind of been smoothed out on the end. And the reason for that is because timbali is the type of head that they have. If you were to play with sticks that had little beaded tips, you could easily damage the heads. Here's another stick I thought would be interesting for you to see because it has such a long taper. And uh, it, the taper is referring to when it starts to pare down to the end where the bead is here. So we have the bead of the stick, shoulder of the stick, this is the taper here, and this is the body of the stick, and the butt of the stick. Now that you have a pretty good understanding of the various stick types that are out there and the parts of a drumstick, let's take a look at the two different, most common uh, grip types, which are matched grip and traditional grip. Matched grip is easy to remember because your hands are matched, that thus matched grip. Um, so what your right hand and your left hand should look the exact same and it's primarily an up and down wrist stroke like 
waving goodbye is what I describe it as. Traditional grip looks like this, and it's called traditional because it's older than matched grip. A traditional grip comes from the tradition of drummers who were wearing marching band drums in like the Revolutionary War and stuff, really way back to then, and it was slung in such a way that it was, it was hung at an angle. And so traditional grip actually works better when the drum is angled such. Uh, because when you have this kind of stroke, instead of waving goodbye, it's kind of like you're turning a doorknob, sort of. When you have that kind of motion, the angle of the stick, both of the sticks are still hitting the surface of the head at about the same angle. Whereas if you were to do match grip now, you'd want to have to raise your shoulder up like that in order to get it at a good angle. So traditional grip had a longer tradition and it comes from having slung drums at an angle. Notice how in traditional grip it's the left hand that has this special kind of grip where you're actually gripping between the thumb and the index finger or, or the joint right in, in there. That's the, where the fulcrum is on that stick. We'll talk about fulcrum in just a minute. But it's the left hand and the right hand just holds the stick normally. Okay, let's talk about fulcrum, the third learning goal of the lesson. The fulcrum is such a critical part of, of understanding drum technique, drumstick technique. The fulcrum is the point at which the stick pivots, which means you want to hold the drumstick in such a way that it has a pivot point. And depending on where you hold the drumstick or squeeze the drumstick, it will have a different pivot point. The, and you're moving the fulcrum when you do that. So if I put the fulcrum back here, it pivots there. If I were to put the fulcrum here, it pivots there. Or I could put the fulcrum here and it pivots there. Every stick, depending on its length and remember the taper and the type of bead and weight and all that stuff that we talked about just a moment ago, has a different sweet spot for the fulcrum. On most of the Vic Firth sticks, the American flag that's printed there is a pretty good spot I found for where the fulcrum is. I don't know if they do that on purpose or if it's just happenstance, but where they print the logo and that American flag is, that's why if you have Vic Firth 5As, you primarily want to grip the stick right at that American flag. As you grip further up on the stick or move the fulcrum forward, because there's more weight behind your hand than in front of it, it, it won't rebound as well, but if you go too far back, like you can practice grabbing at the very end, it's top heavy and it really won't even bounce up at all. So there's a sweet spot, again, on Vic Firth, right about the American flag, where when you play, the stick wants to bounce back up. And that's where rebound comes into play. So I want to actually cut to a video now where I'm going to zoom in and show you where if the fulcrum is positioned differently, the rebound of the stick is absolutely affected. Because the exercises that I'm going to give you at the end of this video are very simple, uh, like four rights in a row or four lefts in a row, for example. And you're going to be thinking about how does the stick feel like it's rebounding? Am I letting it rebound or not? And that's going to cause you to adjust your fulcrum where you, where you grip. And it also affect how you squeeze the stick, which we'll talk about in a moment. But let's cut to this video so you can see that a stick naturally wants to rebound. And depending on the surface that you're playing and the kind of stick and the, where you place the fulcrum on the stick, the rebound is absolutely affected. So let's look at that video real quickly. I've taken a drumstick and I've drilled at four different points on the stick to show you that where you place the fulcrum affects the rebound of the stick, the natural rebound of the stick, and also as a byproduct you're going to hear that the tone is slightly different as well, that there, when you have the best fulcrum position, you'll get the best bounce and the best tone out of a drum and stick. Here's where the fulcrum, if you place it in the back, here's how the stick bounces um, from back here. The tone is pretty heavy. And the stick is top heavy, so it doesn't bounce very well. If I put the fulcrum a little bit further up, it's going to bounce better and have a slightly better tone. It's a little more correctly balanced. I was playing with the stick earlier, and it felt to me like this was about the sweet spot for it. So I drilled a hole here, and what's interesting is how long it bounces. and how uh, kind of pure and good the tone sounds. If I go just an inch forward, if I grab the stick an inch further up, you get a thinner sound and it doesn't bounce as well. 
because you're too far forward now. So notice again, this is the sweet spot, how well the stick bounces and rebounds all on its own when you find the correct spot for the fulcrum. Another lesson you can learn from this, besides the fact that you can get a good tone out of a drum, is that if you're holding the stick like this and you want to play a quiet passage, say for an orchestral excerpt or something, if you adjust your fulcrum from being back here to pinching up here, you can play a little bit quieter sometimes. So you can, in the middle of playing, adjust your fulcrum. Likewise, you can hold the stick back here and you'll mimic that fulcrum further back, which had a heavier tone and uh, feels kind of like a harsher, uh, not as bouncy rebound. But again, the sweet spot on every stick is, uh, you'll have to find it, but right about there. Now that you understand rebound and fulcrum and their relationship, which is really, really massive, that's like kind of the main goal of this lesson, because that will affect your grip a lot. And as you get better at it, uh, finding the fulcrum and how to rebound the stick, you'll be able to play a lot faster. It really influences your, your technique way down the road. Let's talk about how to create a fulcrum in your hand. And also maybe two things that uh, I notice students kind of trip up with when or hinder their fulcrum. You can create a fulcrum between the thumb and any of the fingers. So if I, if I grab here, I have a fulcrum like that. It's kind of weak because I only have one finger. You can do the same thing with your middle finger, your ring, and your pinky, which is ridiculous. Um, but I find that the most stable grip for me is to have a, a kind of a three finger fulcrum, but primarily between the middle finger and the thumb. So it's like this, and I'm grabbing on either side of the stick to create that pivot point and then my index finger kind of rests there and these, uh, these fingers in the back, the ring and the pinky, are going to be used to pull the stick for rebound later down. I understand at the beginning when you're learning this is that's too difficult but focus on kind of gripping the stick with these first three and having these other two just rest underneath the stick like that. Do the same thing with the, with the left hand. I would recommend you probably should learn everything at first match grip because it's simplest and then when you, as you get better you can always shift over to traditional grip. Uh, on traditional grip your fulcrum is created between in the little valley there between your index finger and your thumb and so if we want the fulcrum in the same spot that we had our middle finger we have to slide our fulcrum, it looks like it's further up but it's actually in the same spot but it looks further up on the hand for the same exact fulcrum there. And that's really, I don't even have to use these fingers, but the, the stick should rest kind of on the, the ring finger. And then these two fingers will actually function. They'll do the, as like these fingers function, they'll be pulling the stick for rebound purposes like that. But, it, but to begin with, it's primarily just a wrist twist stroke for traditional grip. And now just a few kind of tips that I see um, students struggle with. Because we want to have the stick be able to rotate like this. You do not want to place your finger on top of it like that. It hinders it from being able to move like that. Does that make sense? If your fulcrum is here and you have something here, there is no pivot point. Um, and I understand why students at first do it because it feels like it's more stable because it is more stable for playing rhythms and things like that. But you, every time you see yourself doing this, and I do this with my students, I'll just kind of tap their finger like, oh, put your finger to the side. You want to remind yourself, oh, that's not a good fulcrum. I want to put it to the side so that eventually the stick can learn to bounce and pivot like that. The second most common error that beginning students make is they'll hold the stick maybe between one or two fingers and they have a pretty good fulcrum there but then these other fingers are like sipping tea or something way out like that. And uh, that actually doesn't affect your fulcrum, right? They're out of the way which is good but the negative side of that is your hand is is in a weird shape using energy that it doesn't need to use and we want to be the most ergonomic and relaxed when we play meaning uh, most natural if we don't need to use a muscle we don't want to use it so for example we don't want our shoulders up if we don't have to be when you're playing drum set you don't want to be hunched over you don't want to be like like a chicken wing you don't need to lift your arms like that similarly you don't have to hold your fingers out like that that's extra energy and so if you see yourself either putting your fingers on top or holding them out like that, try to remind yourself to kind of relax. And I'll do this, I'll shake it out, it helps me for some reason. Then I'll just lift from the elbow, okay, I'm just gonna lift, and I'm gonna grab the stick, 
And I'm gonna feel, okay, yeah, that's the rebound point. Boom, I have a good grip. That should give you a basic understanding of the right way to hold a stick, a few things to avoid. If you really want to dive into the technique, uh, drumstick technique, there's a DVD by Jojo Mayer called Secret Weapons for the Modern Drummer, which is fantastic. I mean, it, it, it revolutionized the way that I approach drum set and stick control by uh, all of the exercises that he gives and the videos. It's just, it is like my go-to thing if you really want to dive into stick technique. All right, the last thing for this lesson is I'm going to give you some exercises to practice and there's some very basic sticking combinations that allow you to focus all of your mind power and energy on this idea of fulcrum and rebound and stick technique. The exercises that I recommend for my students come from the book Stick Control. So if you don't have this book, this is a very useful book for just giving you a bunch of sticking patterns to allow your brain to focus on this concept of rebound and fulcrum. So if I look at the first page here, uh, I recommend using a metronome and you can just set it and uh, then that'll force you to be steady. That's really good too. But you would set your metronome and then you would just play. So first exercise is right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And the whole time I'm thinking, does the stick rebound? And if you need to, you can just by yourself. It seems really boring, but and it doesn't have to be a snare pad. Play one stroke at a time one wrist stroke and see does the stick bounce up. Are you letting it bounce up or are you doing this? Are you putting energy in and up or are you just putting energy down and then it kind of bounces up like a bouncy ball? As you get better, it really feels like I'm kind of just bouncing bouncy balls. That's the best way to describe it because the stick rebounds. So you take an exercise or a page and it says to repeat it 20 times. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two. And I'm thinking about dynamics. How does the stick rebound at all these different dynamic levels? You can practice with different sticks. You can practice at different speeds. Uh, if I take another exercise, for example, paradiddles on number, number five is a paradiddle. Pop. Take a, a few exercises or a page of exercises and just practice them on a pad or if you have to, maybe on the floor or a piece of wood, anything that you have that has a little bit of rebound to it and focus on the idea of fulcrum and rebound. All right, very good. In the next lesson, lesson number four, we'll get back to the drum set and we'll learn some more uh, rock beats besides the first two that you hopefully learned in the first lesson.